Welcome to Spooky News for February 12th, 2021. It's been over a month since I've done a Spooky News segment. I apologize for that delay. I've been planning to do one every two or three weeks, except for October and possibly late September, when I do them weekly. But for some reason, I just haven't felt like doing one lately. Maybe it's the COVID doldrums, or maybe it's just other projects taking up my attention. Either way, welcome to the latest edition. Before I get to the news, just a reminder, Spooky News, and all things Spooky Ventures, is intended to be interactive. That means please interact. You can do that by liking and sharing our videos, commenting on them, subscribing to our channel, or getting in touch with suggestions on things for us to cover. And don't forget to check out the main page at SpookyVentures.com. You'll find a selection of our videos, links to our calendars, and Spooky Ventures merchandise, and our Spooky Event Calendar, which includes horror movie release dates, birthdays of horror, peeps, and more. In case you missed it, we unleashed a new interview on the world on Tuesday. It's with paranormal author and show host Rick Hale. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. With that out of the way, let's get to the news. As you might guess, with that long gap, there is quite a bit to get to. First up is an article about spooky travel. I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to start traveling again. But the fact is, the time is coming soon when we'll all be traveling. So there is going to be a new paranormal location for you to consider when making your plans. Williamson, West Virginia is home to an old hospital that is literally called the Old Hospital on College Hill. There have been stories about hauntings in the hospital for years, and they have hosted paranormal tours in the past. It was even featured on an episode of Destination Fear. Well, now the building has new owners, and they're working on keeping it alive while making it a home for historic and paranormal tours, private ghost haunts, flashlight tours, guided tours, photography tours, weddings, and private events. So you might want to have a look at their website. I'll include the link in the More Information and Sources URL section at the end of the video and then you can make your plans to visit and see it yourself. Turning to books, we have a story that centers on a kid's book. There's going to be a new Little Golden book released later this year devoted to Disney's spooky ride, The Haunted Mansion. It seems a good way to get the little ones into all things spooky, or at least introduce them to the concept of spooky in a non-threatening way. From books, we head into music, where we find an act called Stretch Panic. Their build is Ghoul Pop, and they've released a new music video called Ouija Boy. The song is a, the first single from their upcoming album, due on the 19th, called Glitter and Gore. It shares the spooky, spooky fun concept with that upcoming book. The next entry is a bit more serious in terms of the spooky music vibe. The music this time around is made by horror film director John Carpenter. I have to confess to being a huge Carpenter fan. He's my favorite director and one of the things I love about his work is the music he creates and just the fact that he creates his own music for his films. I mean, it combines two of my passions, music and horror, why wouldn't I love that? Well, he's actually putting out albums of original music set in the same style as his horror soundtracks, and his latest is Lost Themes 3, Alive After Death. It was just released in the last week or so and features collaborations between Carpenter, his son Cody Carpenter, and godson Daniel Davies. A few years ago, Carpenter actually went on tour playing his music, and hopefully we'll get the chance to experience that music live again in the future, and he'll have new stuff to do. But for now, we have a great new CD to fill that gap. From music, we move on to the world of gaming. Do you play the game The Sims 4? Well, if so, you might find a new add-on called the Paranormal Stuff Pack. I've not played the game, so I don't understand the mechanics being talked about in the article. But from what I can gather, there's a haunted house that you can play within, all ready to go. Alter alternatively, you can build your own with all kinds of paranormal items in the pack. Either way, it should bring some spooky fun to the game. Turning to television, have you heard about an upcoming show called Midnight Club? 
It's going to be a Netflix original and is being run by Mike Flanagan, who's probably best known for The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor shows. There was a recent cast announcement made that should please fans of the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Heather Langenkamp is coming on to the show as a doctor. As Flanagan described her, she really is horror royalty, and so she definitely brings an added layer of cred and interest to the show. Fans of Eli Roth's History of Horror will be happy to know that AMC has recently announced that the show is coming back for a third season. That season of the documentary series will consist of six hour-long episodes further delving into the history of all things horror. Are you a fan of the Dusk Till Dawn universe? If so, you probably know that there was a live-action television series and set in that universe. What you might not have heard yet is that director Robert Rodriguez has announced that he's working on an animated show set in the same universe. Not a lot of details have been released yet, but it's exciting news nonetheless. Continuing with animation, but coming back to Netflix, there's news of a new series coming called Skull Island. It's going to be set in the monster universe that includes Godzilla and King Kong. As you might guess, it will be based on the island where Kong was found. Crossing from the television zone into movie territory, there's a new story from Dread Central about the reader's choice for best horror movie of 2020. I bring it up here for a number of reasons. First, it's because the movie has been making it to the top of a lot of lists for best of horror movie, best horror movie of the year 2020. From a more personal point of view, while I didn't do an official list of best horror movies of the year, the movie, Richard Stanley's brilliant adaptation of Lovecraft's Color Out of Space, definitely would have landed in the number one slot for me too. In fact, it displaced John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness as my all-time favorite horror film. So I'm really glad to see the movie getting this kind of respect from all over the place. It's certainly worth it, and I can't wait to see what Stanley does with his next Lovecraftian film as this is the first of a trilogy with Dunwich Horror next in line. Since I mentioned John Carpenter again, this seems like a good point to tie into a story that brings us pretty well back to my previous one about Carpenter. The director probably came to the attention of most people when he did the original Halloween movie. Well, there's a new Halloween film coming around this fall. It was scheduled for release last year, but with COVID, the date was postponed. While Carpenter didn't do any, quote, filmmaking on the movie, he did create the musical score for it. See, it really does come around full circle here. In any event, that means he's seen the movie, and the article talks about the fact that he said of it, uh, which is titled Halloween Kills, he called it the ultimate slasher movie. Coming from John Carpenter, I'd call that high praise, so it seemed noteworthy. From talking about one modern horror franchise, we go to another. Chucky of the Child's Play series made news recently, but not for a new movie. Instead, it's because he appeared in a Texas Amber Alert. Apparently there was a test Amber Alert that was put together, but never intended to be sent out. It featured Chucky as the kidnapper of his son, Glenn Ray, who was seen in the seat of Chucky. Well, the alert was mistakenly sent out via the emergency system, prompting an apology from the agency responsible. I have to wonder what people thought when they saw that alert. Well, that wraps up the news this time, but let's talk about some recent and upcoming dates in the world of all things spooky. We've had some birthdays in the last week or so. Horror fan and rocker Alice Cooper turned another year older on February 4th. The following day was actor John Carradine's birthday. Lon Chaney Jr. was born on the 10th. As long as we're talking February birthdays, author Richard Matheson's birthday is coming up on the 20th. Looking to movie openings, The Reckoning opened on the 5th. Willie's Wonderland is scheduled to open today. Antlers, which has been delayed at least once, is scheduled to open on the 19th. Remember, you can find these dates and more on our spooky calendar. Just go to SpookyVentures.com and scroll down until you see the link for the calendar. That's a wrap for this time. 
keep watching after I'm done talking for the source and more information URLs. Expect me back with more spooky news sometime in March. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and remember to always keep it spooky. Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.